Dear Mum, I'm a vandal. <laughs> I've got two ears, two eyes, a nose. I look just like everybody else. This is my disguise. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sometimes known as a crime prevention officer's nightmare because I work at night. The national blackout during the energy crisis of 1973-74 emphasised a problem, that of the increase in night crime. On all cars from MP, recent losses are stolen. Bedford lorry, index number J. Julia, one Yankee. Glasgow, crime increased. Surrey, substantial increase in vandalism. Preston, stealing from vehicles up 13%. Housebreaking, 65%. Shop breaking, 66%. Yeah, tell them we're going to be a bit of a, sort of a while going through the looking at every traffic. I've done one place eight times. Working man's club. Dead easy to get into. No light in, nothing. But they've got a new club there now with light in and alarms, everything. Are you ever afraid when you're doing a job? Afraid? Well, of course you're nervous when there's lights on. Anyone who says he ain't's a liar. From MP, the Regal Cinema in the High Street, see the manager, disturbance by two years. It's origin information room 1835. Even with the lights back on again, night crime continues to rise, as it's been rising for the last 20 years. Last year alone, there was 260,000 break-ins. That's 800 a night. It could be your turn next. Let me just show you something. This is an area of about 250,000 people. Each pin represents a night crime of one kind or another. 340 in one week, not a year or a month, but one week, 340. Red are breakings. Blue, stolen cars. The rest, arson, violence, vandalism. And these are just the ones we know about. I'm not trying to frighten or worry you. These are facts, and facts that must be faced up to if we are to fight and overcome night crime. In this fight, we have a new scientific weapon, if you will only use it. A weapon that's been around for a very long time. Light. Man has used light as a deterrent ever since he burnt fires in the mouth of his cave to keep off wild animals. Attention requested to a red Jaguar index number, P Papa M Mike X X ray. In 12th century London, citizens were ordered to burn candles in their doorways to prevent crime. Victor 2, Victor 2 from MP, supermarket, Corlands Road. Automatic alarm operating, suspects on premises. It's origin, information room 2130. Yeah, MP, MP from Victor 2, message received, uh, Victor 2 out. I'll go around the back, Stuart. Okay. If a thief has a choice of dark premises or a lit one, it's obvious which one he will choose. Don't go around the back, Stuart. Yeah, it's not so good. Look at this. Oh dear, oh dear. Light makes a man feel vulnerable. Even the small amount of spill light from a shop window or a single bulb over a cash register will make a thief think twice, if not three times. To a small shopkeeper, a break-in is as damaging as a big robbery to a giant corporation. And insurance can't cover the loss of goodwill. <laughs> you are so dumb. <laughs> so, I took this brick and I chucked it at the window. <laughs> Today, light used as a deterrent can range from a simple bulb at the back of a house to scientifically designed systems of lights and fences protecting an industrial complex.
according to a report out today over sixty percent of fires occurred during the hours of darkness of that percentage it thought that over half a course maliciously the cost of the country is estimated at upwards of ten million pounds a year a man died in a london hospital this afternoon from injuries he received yesterday evening police are investigating eyewitness reports that the man was set on by a gang of youths as he crossed the the world's coming to a railway line you won't dare go outside soon So what's so special about this place then? No light, sunny. Yeah, Victor Delta from Victor to Reppenshaw call to the supermarket, Cortlands Road. Uh, we have the front door open. Could you get the key holder, please? Victor to over. Message received. We've just got a lost or stolen, 45 Poplar Road. It's a blue escort and there's no panda available. Will you see the informant? Yes, Victor Delta, Victor 2, Bob can deal with that, so I'll wait here for the key holder, Victor 2 out. Right, so that confirms the index number of the vehicle. Yes. What time did you last see it outside the house? Well, I was going out, in it, down to the pub for a pack of cigarettes. He thought our John had taken it. Uh, I've always told you you should ask. I do! You yeah, never right, ask. Just, just a second. We've only just had it a just, week. Just a second. What yes. time would that have been? It wasn't until our John up, came back without right. it, right. the panel knew it had gone. to know the time. Just... Roughly what time? Well, it must have been about 9.30. Nearly 10! Oh, right, fine. Well, let's say between 9.30 and 10, then shall we find. Now, is there anything that you can tell me uh, about the vehicle that might help us to identify it at a later date? It's not just the vehicle. He's made a right mess of my flower bed. It was this place they used to load and unload lorries. Never had any lighting. Nothing. I did that place on my own. Why did you choose that particular place? Tip off. I got the wages of 40 men. They kept them in a filing cabinet. Not even a safe. It was so easy. Now, as a security guard, it's your job to make sure that it isn't easy. Well, you can't do it all on your own, can you? He says he's scared when the lights are on. He should try being in a little hut all by himself, all night long, when there are no lights on. Because there aren't any lights. So how do you cope? Well, you can't really, can you? I used to sit in that little hut, I used to turn the light on, because it was cosier, it felt safer. But what you didn't realise was that anybody outside could see you, but you couldn't see outside. They got a damn good view of you. Hang on a minute. It used to be quite impossible to see what was out there and what was going on. It was, it was like being wrapped up in black cotton wool. Who's there? Come on, get a move on. Oh, cute, Tim. A bit late, aren't you? Yeah. I used to say to myself, I'll, I'll go out twice an evening and no more. I promise you, I was scared. And when you did go outside, it, it took your eyes ages to get used to the dark. But anyone could do you over the head. You'd never know. Even when I went on patrol, which wasn't often, <laughs> not if I could help it anyway, I still couldn't see anything. Tires, wire, engines, food, scotch, whole lorries, you name it, they had it. But it wasn't my fault. Be off on his rounds soon. It's like bloody Clapton Junction. I don't believe it. 
Evening, Hello Chris. There. Everything alright again tonight? Yeah, thanks. Thought I heard something about six o'clock, but uh, nothing since then. Yeah, no. what kind of what was all that then? Oh, just a noise I heard. I think. Just a noise. Yeah. Yeah. Fine. How much longer you got tonight then? Oh, uh, just a couple of hours, you know. Exterior lighting can do a lot to make even a housing estate secure, because it cuts down on all forms of vandalism. People you know, wouldn't go into that one, but certainly they're going to the one next door. Give it a try. Yeah. Large areas where equipment or goods are stored are that bit more secure if all unauthorised movement can be easily seen. Graffiti on walls is cut down and it's far safer to walk about if these areas are well lit and so easily observed. Even in well lit districts, the shop is vulnerable unless some lighting is left on to increase the chances of intruders being seen. This also acts as a great deterrent. That place is bloody well lit over there, isn't it? That cash there. Yeah. Yeah. Little cafe though, anybody can get in there, no trouble at all. Yes. Operators of overnight car parks can drastically reduce the amount of nighttime vandalism and almost eliminate any cars being stolen if they install a security lighting system. Only a fool commits a crime in full view. Turns me off straight away. Anything lit up. Some guards I know say that they prefer the dark. They feel that it's on their side. They say it makes it easier to stalk an intruder and pounce on him. <laughs> well, they must be daft. It's far more likely that the intruder will pounce on them. If there are no lights, we can hear you security guards coming a mile off. Anyway, you just died in a dark spot. What you must remember is that at night you can hear a man at 20 yards, but with proper lighting you can see him at 200. If the lighting's right, a man can almost do his job without even leaving his hut. And that's something. And even if he does, because there's very little light in the hut, nobody can tell whether he is gone or, or not. Yeah, but if I was really hard up at... Well, if you're desperate, you'll take a chance. Lights or no lights. Many burglaries are committed by the young and inexperienced. Often with little plan and almost always on the spur of the moment. You can't do this place. It's lit up like backpool illuminations. Well, I know a back way, don't I? Now follow me, it's this way. Security lighting can be adapted to fit any premises, but to be most effective, needs to be coordinated with human and physical barriers. You must be mad, it's just as bad round here. Well, if you're chicken, you don't have to come. I'll keep watch. Please yourself. The glare from the lights acts like an impenetrable blanket to the thief. He can be seen, but he can't see. He's already at risk. Victor 2, Victor 2 from MP, Jenkins Warehouse, Hayes Cuttings, automatic alarm. Suspects on premises. It's origin information room 2302. MP, MP from Victor 2, message received. Uh, could you have Victor 0, the dog van, attend as well, please? Uh, Victor 2, over. I always use a different route when I do my patrol, and always a different time, so anybody who's watching, well, they don't get familiar with my routine. But I must say, with all this light, I, I don't even expect trouble. Yeah. 
sisters. Yeah, Bob, they've gone round the back. Tell Victor Zero we'll go round the back, they can cover the front. Yeah, MP, MP from Victor Two. Go to the car called Victor Zero, please. arranged, security lighting provides a weapon for a psychological battle between intruder and guard. A battle that it's almost certain the guard will win. Factory owners, warehouse managers, men who wouldn't dream of walking down a dark alley with a pocket full of fivers, will quite cheerfully leave, lying about in the dark all night, plant and goods worth thousands, even millions of pounds. It's very difficult to convince them, or any other member of the public for that matter, that security lighting is worth it. That is, until they've had a few breakings, installed lights, and noted the difference for themselves. And the reason why it's difficult to convince people is, I believe, that with other forms of security, locks for instance, there is evidence of attempted breakings. With security lighting, there is no evidence, except statistical evidence. Let me give you an example. A small factory in the Midlands, which in one year was broken into and vandalized seven times. Now think of that in terms of lost equipment and lost orders. Now, three years later, no more breakings, no more damage, and what is most important to that factory, no more lost orders. Why? The reason is, I believe, because three years ago they installed security lighting. Nothing complicated, just six 500 watt bulbs. And if security lighting can prevent one burglary or fire, it more than covers the cost of the installation. So, now for the commercial. For advice, phone your local electricity board office or me, your crime prevention officer, at your local police station. One phone call can prevent one of these. Decided. With all this security lighting, vandalisms for the birds. <laughs> 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 